And we're watching Press TV's news review where we look deeper into some of the top stories of the day. Stay tuned. On this news review, the Iranian foreign minister says nobody must be allowed to impose their own will on Lebanon in the wake of last week's devastating blast in Beirut. We believe that the world must help Lebanon, not issue dictates to it. Mama Jawad Zarif made the remarks following a meeting with Lebanese Parliament Speaker Nabi Berri in Beirut. Zarif also sat down with President Michel Aoun where uh, he said Lebanon's victory in the 33-day war against Israel in 2006 shows that the Lebanese can overcome difficulties and the current predicament. In his meeting with caretaker Prime Minister Hassan Diab, Zarif warned that those seeking to use the explosion to their own advantage are not after unity and stability in Lebanon. Zarif also said a joint press conference with caretaker Foreign Minister um, Shar al Wehbi, where he underscored Tehran's determination to stand by Lebanon. I discussed Iran's capabilities to help in Lebanon's reconstruction with my Lebanese counterpart. We also talked about energy cooperation between the two countries. Iran's private sector is ready to help Lebanon in different fields. We believe that only the Lebanese people and government can decide the future of their country. Iran will stand by them and we will support any decision they make. Zarif also expressed sympathy and solidarity with the Lebanese people in uh, the wake of the recent tragedy in Beirut. He said no country should make sending aid to Lebanon contingent on Lebanese political developments. Iran's top diplomat said it's inhumane to use the current crisis in Lebanon as a tool for achieving political goals. For his part, the Lebanese caretaker foreign minister hailed Iran's support. Lebanon's government resigned earlier this week over the Beirut blast that killed nearly 200 people. Joining us on this edition of the News Review, we have activist and political commentator Leith Marouf. Joining us from the Lebanese capital, Beirut, also from London, we have Professor of Media, Practice and Philosophy at Coventry University, Mr. Kenneth Farrow. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Let's start off with this, Mr. Marouf uh, in Beirut. Uh, talk to us more about the recent comments made by the visiting Iranian foreign minister to Lebanon. Uh, foreign Minister Zarif said that no country should make sending aid to Lebanon contingent on uh, Lebanese political developments. Yes, I mean, uh, today is the 14th anniversary of the 2006 war on Lebanon, where Hezbollah resistance defeated apartheid Israel. It also comes at this tragic moment of uh, the explosion in the court of Beirut. And uh, Mr. Zarif uh, comes uh, at the heel of all these uh, Western uh, dignitaries that arrived, including this member, the president of France, and today the minister of defense of France was in Beirut. Uh, she even had a ceremony to welcome the helicopter aircraft carrier with hundreds of uh, foreign engineers, mercenaries of the French army arriving. So we had a dangerous situation, but we can see clearly the difference between how the Iranians and the East in general, like China and Russia deal with uh, the leadership here in Lebanon and Lebanese people and respect their uh, independence in comparison of uh, the pressures that we're seeing from France, who are demanding specific kind of government to come out of uh, the resignations that happen. Kenneth Farrell, uh, I'd like to get your perspective on those comments as well. The Iranian foreign minister said uh, nobody must be allowed to impose their will on Lebanon in the wake of last week's devastating blast in Beirut. Why would uh, uh, certain countries want to politicize the issue of aid to Lebanon right now? Well, because this is an opportunity like all natural disasters or man-made disasters for disaster capitalism uh, to, take, uh, to, to go into action. And there's a kind of shock doctrine whenever something happens where the, the nation state or uh, foreign powers use the opportunity of uh, the shock of the people to try and push through unpopular legislation or try to push through their own political agendas. So this notion of disaster capitalism is at, is at play here and that's what Macron and the others are trying to do. Uh, it's, it's no more uh, than pushing through their neoliberal uh, policy 
uh, which they're trying to impose on Lebanon for their own gain. So I think we have to look at uh, other disasters like we've had before. Uh, and you see the, 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 the capitalists take this as an opportunity to impose their own will. And of course, the people of Lebanon have uh, suffered greatly, not just uh, uh, on the anniversary of the war, as uh, my colleague mentioned, but of course, uh, it, it survived the civil war. So this is a very strong people who are going to withstand, I think, these attempts uh, to uh, try to influence the politics of the country uh, according to the demands of foreign powers like France. And I'm sure the United States are, are at hand as they have been over the past few years, trying to influence the politics uh, of the country. So this uh, this approach of Macron and the others is really cynical. Uh, they really don't care about the Lebanese people. Uh, the country was really uh, on its knees uh, financially, uh, and COVID didn't make it any easier. And now this, this disaster has obviously put on more pressure. But uh, I think uh, I completely agree with the position of, uh, of the uh, Iranian representative when he said that this should not be an opportunity for, uh, for foreign powers to influence the politics or, in fact, to make profit. Mr. Marouf, uh, the foreign minister, uh, Iranian foreign minister, Muhammad Javad Zarif, also said that uh, uh, those seeking to use uh, this explosion and this tragedy to their own advantage are not after unity and stability in Lebanon. Who is it that would benefit uh, uh, from, uh, from not seeing a stability and uh, uh, the lack of unity in Lebanon? Obviously, apartheid Israel is the number one target of such a statement. But also, don't forget that uh, yesterday, shamefully, the uh, leadership of the United Arab Emirates uh, signed a treasonous peace treaty with uh, Israel. And that, you know, is a clear indication that you know, countries like Saudi Arabia and, you know, United Arab Emirates um, and apartheid Israel, who are the main partners uh, and the main, you know, police force of the imperial powers in the region, uh, are going to benefit from such a disaster in Lebanon. Uh, many questions are still open for how this disaster happened. And, you know, hopefully tonight, uh, with the speech of uh, Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah, the Secretary General of uh, Hezbollah, Maybe some more light will shed on that. Uh, as we are speaking right now in this interview, uh, I'm, you know, Foreign Minister Jawad Zarif is giving an interview to Al Mayadeen. So maybe uh, after this discussion that we have, we're going to have more information about what is the future in relationships between the Bond and the rest of the resistance assets. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Leith Maruf joining us from Beirut. Also, thanks to Kenneth Farrow speaking to us from London. Uh, and uh, thank you for your thoughts on this segment of the program. That's it with our news review for now. Do stay tuned. There's plenty more to come here on Press TV. Stick around.